Hi there. Thank you for joining me on our study in the book of Acts once again. Today we are going to start on Acts chapter 16, verse 35, and we're going to go down to chapter 17, verse 12. And here Paul and Silas were in jail uh, because they had been preaching about Jesus, and then the jailers said that the magistrate and the officials wanted to just let them go, and Paul says, no, just a minute here. They treated us unfairly. We were Roman citizens and they did not treat us well. And so they had to come and let Paul and Silas out of jail and they were really embarrassed about what happened. Then Paul went from there on to Berea and here we get a message from the Bereans how they were more noble than the Thessalonians, and it is a very powerful example for us. So I am looking forward to sharing this with you today. Once again, thank you for joining me on our study in the book of Acts. As I mentioned, we are in chapter 16 today, and we're going to start in verse 35. We pick up the story here in Philippi where Paul and Silas had gone to preach the gospel, and there were some people that took offense at what they were saying, and so they were brought before the magistrate and they were put in prison. And long about midnight, Paul and Silas were worshiping God and praying. And there was a big earthquake and all the jail doors popped open and the jailer seen that the doors were open and supposed that all the prisoners were gone. He was going to fall on his own sword and take his own life. But Paul called out to him and said, no, no, we are all still here. And so he brought a light and he seen that all the prisoners were still there and he was quite amazed at the fact that all the prisoners were there even though the doors were open. So he said to Paul, what must I do to be saved? Paul told him you have to believe and it ended up that him and his whole household were saved and they were baptized and then they fed Paul and Silas and the, the prisoners that were there with them. And the next morning, we pick up here, it says, when it was daylight, the magistrate sent the officers to the jailer with an order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrate had ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave, go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens, and they threw us into prison. Now they want to get rid of us quietly. No, let them come themselves and escort us out. Uh, this was a serious situation here because the way you treated Roman citizens was supposed to be different than the way you treated other people. And they didn't realize that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. We deal with this later on in the book of Acts 2 and that's why Paul ended up getting sent to Rome here, you know, they, they, they were just going to let Paul and Silas go. They just sent word to the jailer. You can just let them go. Just send them out. They can go. But Paul says, no, that they, they mistreated us. They didn't treat us the way they were supposed to. So you had them come and escort us out. And so <laughs> the officials were shaking in their boots and they came and they escorted Paul and Silas out of the jail and asked them to leave their city. Verse 38 the officers reported this to the magistrate, and when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escort them out of the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and encouraged them, and then they left. And so this mad, these magistrates, they came all worried because they realized that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens and that they had wronged them. They came to appease Paul and Silas and say, you know, we're sorry, we're sorry that we did this. So they brought them out of prison and they requested that they leave the city. They didn't command them to leave the city because they'd already done so many things wrong, right? But they requested that they leave the city. And so what ended up happening is that they went to Lydia's house. She's a woman who dealt in purple cloth, very expensive cloth, and Paul had been talking with her when they went down to the river. And 
led her to the Lord and she encouraged him to come to their house and to stay with him. And so they had before they were thrown into prison. Once they were released from prison, instead of leaving the city as the magistrates had requested, they went to Lydia's house and they encouraged the brothers there. Then they left. And we're going to continue on right into chapter 17. It says, When they had passed through Amphilius and Apollia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue on three Sabbath days, and he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that Christ had suffered and raised from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is a Christ, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace and formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But they did not find them, and they dragged Justin and some of the brothers before the city officials and saying, these men have caused trouble all over the world, and now they have come here. And Jason has welcomed them into his house. And they are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. Well, it seems like everywhere that Paul goes, it causes a lot of problems because he's preaching about Jesus. As he was going to the synagogue and preaching about Jesus and persuading them that he was the Christ, a number of Jewish people, as well as God-fearing Greeks and a number of prominent women came to the Lord. And this upset the crowds. The Jewish people became jealous of that. And so they went to the marketplace and they gathered up a bunch of rough looking characters to create a riot against Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were staying at Jason's house. So they took Jason and a number of the other brothers before the city officials and they said, these men are causing trouble all over the world. And now they've come and Jason has welcomed them into his home. And they're defying Caesar's decree saying that there's another king, king they called Jesus. Of course, it was against the law to say there was another king. There was only supposed to be one king, and that was Caesar. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into a turmoil. They just got all upset about this when they heard what was going on, right? They made Jason and the others to post bond before they would let them go. They had to pay money in order to be set free. Continue on in verse 10, and it says, As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Now this is one thing that is really encouraging to us because these Bereans would not just take the first word that was given to them. They listened to what Paul was saying. It's not that they didn't listen to him. They did listen to him. And then they would go home and they would search out the scriptures. They would study to see if what Paul was saying was the truth. And of course, we know that Paul was able to back up everything he was saying from the scriptures because the prophetic word all through the old covenant points to Jesus and that Jesus is going to be a Messiah. And so they went back and they examined him. And it tells us here that they were more noble than the Thessalonians because the Thessalonians, instead of studying to see if what, what Paul was saying is true, they ended up creating a riot. Here the Bereans, where Paul and Silas had been set, are getting the message the same as the Thessalonians were, but their reaction is much different in that they went to the scriptures to study to see if what Paul was saying is the truth. Now, this is a very good example for you and I. Unfortunately, many people, it's our tendency, our human nature, just to accept what's being said rather than to go and study things out ourselves. Many years ago, I've determined that whenever I hear something new or somebody disagrees with what I say, then I don't say anything. I don't get in an argument with them or I don't discuss it with them. I just go back and lock myself in my office and I pour through the word and I, I look and see, is what they're saying the truth? Did I make a mistake? Did I say something wrong? Is there something wrong in my theology? And then I go and study it out for myself. And one of the reasons I do this is because of the 
commendation given to the Bereans here saying that they were more noble than the Thessalonians because they went and searched it out in the word. Oftentimes I've had people come to me and say, okay, well, I don't really agree with what you say. You know, I think it's this way and this way. And so I think, okay, well, maybe I need to restudy it again. Maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I not remembering all the scriptures or something. And so then I go back and I study. And oftentimes the Lord gives me a fresh revelation and even a deeper conviction of what I was teaching. And so it's important for us to do that, even in these videos that we're doing here, even though we're going through verse by verse, it's good for you to take some time and to read it and ask the Lord to give you revelation, to give you revelation of, of what, what is being said. I can teach you and in teaching these words, I'm laying out an environment where you can get a revelation. But unless you are in the word of God yourself, then the Holy Spirit can't give you a revelation. And that's what I like about the Bereans. They didn't just take and even discuss amongst themselves. They went back to the scripture. Because when you put the scripture in you, then the Holy Spirit is able to give you a revelation of what's being said. And so it's good for all of us to have people checking to see what we're teaching that it's correct because we don't want to teach something that's wrong. And, you know, I had a guy the other day that commented on one of my teachings and I understood where he's coming from. I understand what he's saying, but he, he just had one premise that he wasn't, he wasn't considering. It's good for us to examine those things. It's good for us to look at what people are saying and to understand because as I share what my revelation is from the Lord and you share what your revelation is from the Lord and, and we get to discuss it and look at it and look at the scriptures, we get a fuller understanding of what God is trying to say to us and what plan he has. There is no one man, not me, not you, not anybody else that has everything all figured out. And anybody who thinks that they have God all figured out, you're missing the boat. I think that's why God has given us an eternal life so that we can spend the time getting to know him and getting to know his character and everything that he's about. Because I think it's going to take an eternity to learn all the things that there are to learn of God. But for a while this time that we are on this earth, I think this is a very good encouragement for us to be like the Bereans, to go and study the word of God and to see that what is being taught is correct. It's good for us to be able to look at things from a different angle. You know, we don't want to be so dogmatic that we are unteachable. We want to be teachable. So even though we study things out and we look, look at things and we, we get an understanding, we need to keep our heart open because one thing that I've learned over the number of years that I've studied the Word of God, 40 some years, 50 years, the one thing that I've learned is that as you mature and as you grow in the Lord, then God gives us a deeper revelation of the Word. He gives us a deeper and a deeper revelation and, and it just, it, it becomes deeper and deeper. You know, I think I've told this story before, but I'm not sure if I've told it here or not. If you remember the story about the, the wedding feast where Jesus went to the wedding feast in Canaan and he turned the water into wine and we all talk about that miracle, that that was Jesus's first miracle, that he changed water into wine. And a few years ago, I was reading that scripture and I was looking at it and I was reading over that story again and I said, Lord, there's got to be something deeper here that, that's going on because this is the first miracle that Jesus does. And here he is starting his ministry. He's picked these new disciples. They are with him in the first event that he's doing uh, uh, as part of his ministry. And... He changes this water into wine. There's got to be something deeper to that. The Holy Spirit showed me that the changing the water into wine was actually Jesus showing his disciples and showing us the comparison between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The, the wine that was there to begin with, it was okay. It was good wine, but it wasn't sufficient. It wasn't enough to go the whole distance. It, it ran out and, and, and it was going to bring embarrassment to, to the family. 
When Jesus turned the water into wine, it was the most superior wine. Nobody had ever tasted wine like that. It was the best wine, and it was sufficient. I believe that if they had drank all that wine, that those things would have just filled up again because it would have been sufficient. And Jesus was showing in this miracle a comparison between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Yes, the Old Covenant was good, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to go the distance. Under the New Covenant, it's much superior. It's much better wine. It tastes better, and there's enough to go the distance. And so that was a great blessing for me to receive that, that revelation, that understanding. So we never want to go to a point where we think that we have everything understood. In fact, a number of years ago, when I was still studying in my, my paper Bible, I use, I use my phone all the time now. I can have so many translations right at my, my fingertips. But when I was using my paper Bible, I was reading one day and I came to a spot that I'd highlighted in my Bible because I always used to read it with a highlighter and every time the Lord would show me something, I would highlight that those scriptures. And I found as I was reading through, just I wasn't studying per se, I was just spending time reading and just spending time with the Lord. As I was reading through and I got to a portion of scripture that I'd highlighted, I just kind of skim read it. And, and I got to the end of it and I continued to write, read. And then all of a sudden, I just thought, what did I do? Why did I do that? Why did I just kind of skip over that part? Because I'd highlighted and I felt I'd, I'd received the revelation from that. So I quit using that Bible and I, 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 now I don't mark my Bible. I'm not telling you not to mark a Bible. That's up to you whether you mark your Bible. But I just found that when I did, then I relied on the revelation that I got on that time and I wasn't looking for a new revelation. I wasn't looking for something deeper that the Lord wanted to take me through. And that's what happens to us oftentimes, right? That we can get caught into this trap. But here the Bereans were so much better because they took and they studied the Word of God. And this is what I think God wants to tell us to do. That we need to, we need to examine every day what the Lord is saying to us. Verse 12, it says, Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of the prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Many people believed as Paul and Silas had been speaking about the gospel and about the word and about Jesus. And so our time is at an end for today already. And so we're just going to stop here at the end of verse 12 and we will pick it up next time. So let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for Paul and Silas who were faithful and committed to your word. Didn't matter what happened to them. We thank you, Father, that they are always... Uh, preaching your gospel, that many people were coming to the Lord, both Greek women and men and, and Jewish believers. And, and Father, we just thank you for that. And Father, we thank you for the example of the Bereans when they went, when they went to Berea, that they were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, and that they received the message with eagerness and they examined the scriptures uh, every day to see if what Paul was saying was the truth. Father, what an example this is for us. Father, I ask you to help us to be diligent like these Bereans where we would not just hear a message and just accept it without going to your word and studying it for ourselves. And Father, pray, we just pray that you would always keep our heart open to what other people are saying and for the revelation that the Holy Spirit has for us from your word. We just thank you for the opportunity we have to share these messages, Lord. We just pray a blessing on each one that's listening. Father, we just thank you for each one in Jesus' mighty name. Remember, God loves you and so do I. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next session. Take us home, girls. Bye.